for the um, introduction. And I also want to thank the Black Business Council in the Built Environment Youth for the invitation. And I also want to um, acknowledge uh, the CEO and every all the attendees that are present today. Thank you for uh, um, inviting the NHBRC to come and present on the opportunities that uh, we have, as well as, um, <clears throat> sorry, what the NHBRC has to offer in terms of, you know, um, development in, in the construction space. So as mentioned, my name is Sharon Grimby and I am part of the NHBRC and uh, I will be presenting on the role of the NHBRC, just a brief background on the South African landscape, the role of the NHBRC, NHBRC registration, our training programs, as well as opportunities for enterprises, for those who are entrepreneurs and those who are aspiring to tap into that space. So as a brief introduction, our current population in South Africa has just passed the 60 million mark. So we are a highly populous country and Gauteng as a province has about 15.5 million, which is more than 25% of the total population. And supplemented with that, we have a housing demand, a huge housing demand of 2.4 million house, households. And the definition of one household is one house has four occupants. So it's 2.4 million households that are still waiting for houses as per the human settlements programs and the like. And it's growing. So if you look at the population pyramid on the right hand side, you can see that our population is very um, intense when it comes to youth. So we have almost more, uh, half the population is youth. So it's zero to 24 uh, is the youth category. And with the housing demand, as well as, you know, <laughs> the youth that we have, the number of children that we have, it means that uh, for the construction space, you will always have a demand for houses. And besides the demand that is there, um, we need to accommodate the large population that is, you know, growing. But obviously these statistics will be um, skewed by the COVID situation because we're now having, you know, very strange dynamics happening due to the pandemic. But it does not really make any major difference in terms of the future prospects of the construction space and um, the future demand in terms of housing. So um, I think I'm also going to have network issues, but you bear with me. I'll change my network as I proceed, should I have any other problems. Now I'll move to the second slide, which talks about the, um, the employment statistic. So you have 65.5% of the population is of the working age. The, those are people between 15 and 64. So out of that, Half of, of this group is a labor force, so they are ready for work. But then only 25% of the entire population is employed, and we have a high an unemployment rate of 32.6%. And this unemployment rate is gradually growing. But then we need to do something about it. So I've I've highlighted two problem statements. The first one is the housing backlog and the demand, and also the unemployment, uh, the high unemployment rate that needs to be catered for. So as a country, we need to use the tools that are already available. 
So I'll start with the Constitution of the Republic in section 26, part one says, everyone has the right to have access to adequate housing. So this right to have access to adequate housing, it means that in part two, the state is meant to make reasonable legislative and other measures and with the resources available to achieve this right. So the state is meant to use some of its uh, funding to afford people to have access to adequate housing. Subsequent to that, we have the Housing Act, which provides for which provides for the uh, facilitation of sustainable housing development processes. And it, it also uh, allows for the purpose to lay down the general principles that are applicable in housing development. You have, you have national that uh, will make available the resources then you have provincial and the local government, which is uh, earmarked for implementing these housing developments. Then um, the Housing Consumer Protection Measures Act, which is where the NHBRC as a, a, a state entity, it provides for housing consumers with warranty protection in new homes against structural defects and roof leaks. And it also assists housing consumers in terms of the enforcement of agreements concluded with home builders. So in essence, the act that the NHBRC is under, it's, it's to protect the housing consumers who are exposed to contractors who deliver housing units of uh, substandard design and workmanship or materials. And then in terms of the product offerings that the NHBRC has, um, the NHBRC has home builder registration, the enrollment of new homes, home inspections, complaints and conciliations, suspensions of home builders, uh, advisory services and home builder training. And I'll go into those um, systematically. So let's start with uh, builder registration. So if you are a, an aspiring builder or you are in, a, in the construction space and you want to register with the NHBRC, so there is uh, forms that you fill in and there's an application fee that you pay. And then following that, there is, um, uh, there is, before you go to annual renewal, there is a test that the technical person is uh, meant to, to write. And then uh, following that, you have an annual 32 that is due every single year. Um, Following that, we also have builders' manuals. So you have a home building home building manual, and then you also have um, a, a home building. A, we have a simplified home building manual, and then we have a collection of all the sun's codes put together as uh, you know a compilation. And all these codes are related specifically to the construction or home building um, environment. Okay, so. We have, we have a number of training programs from the NHBRC and these are administered for free. So um, NHBRC will foot the bill for these. Um, and they are meant to empower those who want to learn the skills and not just technical skills, but also other skills that would help you to be a proficient or a or an efficient home builder who is competent. So we've got brick laying, which is a 40 day course that is accredited. And then we've got plastering, which is 46 days, plumbing, which is 38 day course, um, roof carpentry. And I've put there the list of all the, the unit standards and the credits and the NQF levels and the total number of hours and days. 
Then we have the soft courses, which are your construction management, as well as finance for non-financial managers. And then we offer other courses that are related to technical home building skills. So, so if you if you now going into the practical part of it, as well as um, uh, occupational health and safety, which is a one day course from the NHBRC side, and one that is called innovative building technologies, which I will touch on later in the presentation. And we also have a course called the housing development value chain. So I will touch on the housing development value chain because um, that particular course, it's, it's a half day course, but it helps builders to realize opportunities that are within that are within the, the construction space. Um, furthermore, you know, improving our other modules. So we have a course for strictly technical professionals. These are experienced graduates, your inspectors, your engineers, and with the changes in the landscape, because now you, you see that houses, they want rapid houses. Remember the housing backlog that we have to deal with. And now there's rapid houses, they want, you know, fast development. So these changes, they, uh, there's, uh, you know, opportunities for technical professionals to empower themselves in terms of these changes. And then um, there's also an artisan development program where you go into a, a, an institution and the NHBRC will mentor you and coach you in terms of from outside, but then the institution itself, whether it's a TVET college, will train you on those uh, particular skills that you, you've, you've registered for. But also, um, as you can see there at the bottom, this young graduates program, it, we don't have one currently, but the Department of Human Settlements is looking at developing a program specifically for young graduates to come into, it's a 24 month program where they'll be placed in companies that require their, their um, academic background and the companies will help those young graduates to get professionalize and NHBRC will be in a position to assist them in terms of, you know, getting their professionalization, whether it's through SACP, CMP or EXA or whichever uh, institution that will be accrediting that particular graduate. So I will go into, I've touched on the registration process and the renewal and then, and Part of the enrollment which is when a house when you have a development the builder needs to enroll the house through the NHBRC processes but now um, there's one called inspection so NHBRC's main role is in terms of assuring quality in the construction space so um, inspections is our key area of focus and in order for us to achieve that mandate of assuring quality homes, we have to protect the interests of the homeowner by regulating the home builders. So what we primarily, um, what we primarily rely on are the home building regulations and the Building Standards Act. And we look at the mandatory functions, the functional mandatory regulations, which is safety, health, in terms of the actual house itself, accessibility and the protection of buildings. And there are three compliance rules in essence to be able to build efficiently. It's either you use your deemed to satisfy rules using your standards from your SABS, or you can have a competent person engineer who's going to endorse your, your design through a rational design or a, an assessment situation. But then also there's performance-based methods through Ag Agrima South Africa, which is a, a, um, a, a state entity from public works. 
that tests products that are new in the market. And these, these products are used in those that are used in the home building space. Um, you can build a house using those products, using performance-based methods. So, Sorry, Ms. Um, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Uh, uh Apologies for uh, interjecting while you are still presenting. I uh, just wanted to sensitize you on the time, you know. Uh, yeah, because of, yeah, I just, right yeah, I just want, okay. yeah, we, 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 I think we, I've just uh, added two minutes so that we can uh, allow other members and then I believe to see uh, other, uh, uh, most of the things will be asked in the Q&A session, ma'am. Okay. Apologies. All right, but, uh, um, so I've spoken about SABS and Agrima, but what I really want to touch on in terms of opportunities is for prospecting prospective builders to understand the housing development value chain in its entirety so that you can realize the opportunities. So number one is ITP. So housing starts with the people. It starts at the local level. That's where the work is. So at those IDP sessions, when the when the ward councillor calls people, that's when um, prospective, um, you know, young contractors should be very active and group themselves, so that by the time they have these projects uh, ready for construction in that particular area, you are ready for the job. Because what happens is they'll end up recruiting people from different provinces and bring them in your space if you ha had not been actively involved right in the beginning. So these ITPs are submitted to the local authorities and approved there. And then they, it, through the local authorities, that is your metros and your the, the municipalities, they approve professional teams who will survey the land, who will look for areas where housing development will take place. Then you have geotechnical investigations that will happen. These are preliminary ones that will ensure that the area is suitable for construction. And then in terms of human settlements, number five, that's when they identify different programs. So human settlements has a lot of different housing programs that they have. Some are called community residential programs. These are your social housing type of programs. And then you have programs that are called FLISP finance linked. So there's financing involved and people will be recruited through developers or banks to come and participate and the human settlements will fund some of those projects. And then the, the purchasing of land conveyances who are involved in the human settlement space. Then at stage number 10, there are tenders that are issued at the local level way before development starts. This is for your bulk infrastructure to set up now your, your water services, electricity and the like before construction actually takes place. And then there's detailed planning for top structures. So now these are the actual plans for the individual houses or units that will be built. And that is also done at the local level. So by the time construction starts, a lot has happened. And that's also at times when, you know, prospective contractors should be actively involved and work through the Department of Human Settlements to look for opportunities for construction when, when the houses are being now built. So we only come in um, from once the plan is approved at municipality, NHBRC will enroll the house and prepare for the enrollment. Mm -hmm. And then construction starts, we have our inspectors who go on site and they inspect the different houses. And then eventually there's a warranty cover from the NHBRC side. So there are different, because of the housing backlog and the demand, and Gauteng being a province that is very populated, the patterns are changing and the types of houses that are being, you know, the programs that are being implemented, it's changing patterns. Some, it's no longer the single units, you know, you have to look at those type of things and, uh, and the opportunities are there, but it's all part of the housing value chain at the end of the day. So I wanted also slightly talk about IBT. So IBT is, is 
uh, realizing the opportunities in terms of material manufacturing and looking at alternative products other than brick and mortar. So you have light steel frame. You also have uh, precast sandwich panels. You have products such as insulated concrete composites. You have timber framing. You have structurally insulated panels and then you have insulated concrete formwork. These are just examples of you know, different materials that you can look into. And if you go into Agroma South Africa, maybe uh, BBC BE can also invite, I don't know if you have, invite Agroma South Africa to just um, share what they do and how to get your materials to be tested and endorsed through them and you know, possibly there's a fund set aside for those types of materials for projects that will be built using alternative technologies. So with that being said, um, I just want to conclude by saying that the NHBRC is there to empower builders, contractors, technical professionals, quality assurance um, uh, people within the human settlement space in order to meet that housing demand and create opportunities to alleviate this high unemployment rate. So thank you. Thank you so much.